Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and all things above and in between, and I am one of your hosts, Obsessive Rear Love. As always, I am joined by... I'm Laura Weaver. And... And I'm Teddy. And I would like to welcome all of you to the Own Tempo Pokemon Podcast. Air horn noises. <laughs> Today, we are discussing the final set of, of proper starters. Uh, we are here with the... Aldea kids. Uh, we are Sprigatito, Fuecoco, and Quaxley. I, it is wild that we are already here. It's been nine months. I can't believe it. What is time? I know, right? God, it feels like we started this like a week ago. <laughs> 2024 is more than halfway over. Okay, like think about that for two seconds. And oh make, God, it is. And pretend you don't it? want to walk into the ocean. That's fine. <laughs> anyway uh so i fucking love the paldea starters scarlet and violet were great games and the paldea starters when they first were revealed i was like oh my god they're so perfect they were said so, that they, they have such character to them the art is very good they're very they're all such peppy little dudes and the way that you're introduced to them in the game is great and obviously i was going to pick the cat because I'm a cat person, and I loved, I, 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 I obviously, I picked Litten because it's a cat. I've had cats my whole life. I see this, this little adorable child, and I'm like, yes, no, the cat, that God, one. <laughs> I wish I could afford to have a cat right now. I'm oh, sorry. I love them. They're so important. Blessed I, creatures. They're so cute. And uh, so I'm going to do... I, I just want, let, let's get the weed jokes out of the way so that we don't have to deal with them anymore after this. I, I wasn't even them. thinking about There's... weed when it came to Spurgatito. I never did either. I like, like, I never think about it. I think about then, weed like, with 420, sure. That's all good fun. I think about weed when, like, something's actually shaped like a weed leaf. But, like, Spurgatito doesn't really have the weed leaf shape. Like, you could argue that it's neck rough is, and I'm like, and I'm just here like, it's not fucking weed, you piece of shit stoner! <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, like, it's neck rough upside down would look like a depressed weed leaf, and I don't know if anyone wants to smoke that. Yeah, I mean, most people would, you know. The saddest, wilted... I mean, like, what what do you think the people who do this are? It's like, that's why it's on their only personality trait. I suppose. I think some people just also get carried away with memes and try to apply them to anything, even if it isn't suitable or funny. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, I, I never would have made that connection. And then I come on the internet looking for, for pictures of, you know, the like, you know, I'm looking for discourse about the cute starters. And everybody's showing this cat with, with like, bloodshot eyes. And I'm like, God damn it! <laughs> Because this cat is perfect. It's like an ex it's like an excellent little design. It is one of the, the, the greatest like cartoon cat designs I've ever seen. It's perfectly shaped. It's fluffy as hell. I uh, its ears are adorable. It's got it, it its little face is perfect. It's I, the platonic I ideal of cartoon cats. It's true. Much it's similar to how Score Bunny is the platonic ideal of cartoon rabbits. It's very, it's very much like the same kind of thing. I, I love it so much. I love it so much. It's very cute. I, I picked it. I think I picked it as my starter in my Violet playthrough, um, which was my second one. Because um, we'll talk about my thoughts on Skeledurge when we get there, but. Um... Lore has a lot of wrong opinions, as y'all have known <laughs> from yeah, from oh, from the. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's my favorite of the, uh, Gen 9 starters. I really like it. It's very it's actually cute, not, very uh, fun. It's not, it's not a, uh, the J there is actually pronounced in the Hispanic twilight. It's Nyao Ha. Nyao. Nyao Ya. Nyao Ya. Nyao Ha. That's fun. Ah, Cat Leaf. Yes. <laughs> That's charming. Or rather, Meow Leaf. Mm-hmm. And then Sprigatito is uh, is is just a wonderful name. Sprig and it's Gatito. Just a wonderful... It's just like the they really they really were like yes we're gonna weave this Spanish in very very in very uh, likable ways I'm and fond like of it. Sprigatito is just it's beautiful. It's That's perfect. how you do localization. 
Yeah, I I just I want to hold it so bad. I want to I want to cuddle it. It's so cute. God, I love it. Oh, can you guess um, what its Spanish name is? Oh, I don't. I I have no idea. What is it? Sprigatito. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I, actually, I think most Spanish names are are similar to the, the, the English names in in terms of localization. But in this case in particular, it makes sense. So Florigato is one of the best middle stage Pokemon, uh, especially in terms of starters, that there has ever been. I've like, been complaining about the awkward middle stage Pokemon for the last nine months. Florigato, throw all that shit out. Uh, Florigato was my favorite middle stage evolution in the entire set of starters. It's so good. Um, I love it. It's 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 Puss in Boots first of all, which is excellent. It's got this little like yo yo thing on its on its on its little like rough, which is great. It's got like you know it, it adds just a little bit of color. It stands up obviously, but like you know everybody kind of saw that coming. But like the you know the I I wanted to I want a quadrupedal cat as much as the next person, but like. First if of you're all, gonna have it stand uranium. up. This is how you have it stand up. <laughs> yeah, the, this is. It looks so good. It like it's definitely got like, you know, person in a suit kind of vibes. But like it, it's. I mean, the vibes that I get from Florigato are. This is a teenager. This is a teenager oh, that yeah, thinks absolutely. that they're cool as fuck. I yeah, also, I also are. think that Score Bunny's middle stage is a really good middle stage. They have, I think. Oh yeah. I think. I forget what was what was Score Bunny's middle uh, stage. It's name again? uh, it's Raboot. Yeah, yeah. I feel like one. Raboot the and Florigato could be like friends in middle school. Oh, absolutely. They were t- <laughs> they 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 draw Sonic OCs together. They they because they are Sonic OCs. <laughs> Honestly, both of them are Sonic OCs in like the perfect way. They're like it, they are so good teenager type Pokemon, and I I adore like the. The, the little masquerade mask it, uh, that that will turn into Miascaradas and it's it's so perfect it's it's lovely he's got he's got the 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 roguish like vibe and like the the fluffy like little lynx uh, stuff on the cheeks is really nice like it's a like it's just such a smooth transition it works so well it is extremely extremely perfect it's delightful I I love its color scheme. I like its oh, funny yeah, yo-yo. Oh yeah, it's great. Its funny yo-yo is fantastic, and it's it's a nice little like pop of color because like Sprigatito has like the red pink eyes, and you're not really sure where that's going. And then like Florigato adds pink, and then Meowscarada adds even more, and it's like oh my god, it's perfect. It's like just a perfect progression. And like there's not really much to say about Florigato other than yes, this is perfect. It's so perfect. Let's... <laughs> So let's move on to uh, Joker Persona. I mean, well, Meowscarada. The thing that I think is interesting about this set of starters is that they all evolve to be performers. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Which is kind of a fun little, like, like continuation of, like, how the, the Galar starters all kind of felt like different aspects of, like, British pop culture. This one is, like... This one is also sort of, like, Spanish pop culture, but in a very in a much more focused way. Meowskarada is a magician, but he's also like a phantom thief, it feels like, and, and he's got masquerade ball stuff as well, and it's great. I Meowskarada is so nice. I love every single bit of like the uh the vibes that this cat has. So how about the... that flower trick? Yeah, yeah, all of these all of the the the, the entire uh the gang gets like a bunch of really good moves. Like they because like, um, the 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 Galar starters also had like uh, signature moves. They've been doing this since like Water Shuriken on uh, since uh, since uh, Gen Six. I'm pretty sure everybody had, like they they give the starters like special cool things to do. But uh, it worked really well this gen. All three of the starters are actually fairly viable competitively. And Meowskarada, obviously giving it protein, makes it ridiculous. Just so, even though it's been nerfed, it's still really good because it has uh, it has U-turn and it can pivot and it's very fast and it's just very, very good. 
Um, and it really does feel like a performer. It feels like it's doing like a bunch of fancy tricks and stuff. And the dark type is really neat. I uh, I love it. It's I, I love magicians and stuff in general. Like the whole vibe of stage magic and everything is very, very cool. Um, and I also just love the idea of a mouse of a of a masquerade. It's like the the masquerade ball type thing. It's very cool. So it, it's just God. There's so it's so aesthetic. It's just so good. It's hard for me to find words. Masquerade like, just... is my favorite of the Gen Nine final stages by a good margin. Yeah, I'm glad that I picked the the grass one. Like, I love all of them, but Miascarada is very much ahead of the curve in terms of like really good designs. Like, I will, I like, I think that uh, Quaxley and Fuicoco's uh, lines are also very, very good, but Miascarada is kind of in a class of its own. Yeah, and like, I'm biased again because cat. Uh, but you know, still, it's like. It's a cat and it's a music and it's a magician. Like the, 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 everything, everything has everything love core possible has been concentrated into this design, and so I'm glad that that I was able to, you know, pick the cat immediately and be rewarded for that so heavily. <laughs> like because I wasn't really with Incineroar. I grew to like Incineroar, and I like Incineroar now, but it's not like directly love core. It's more like in, oh, I have I understand the appeal now but when I saw it. But with this, it's like, oh my god, yes. This was made for <laughs> me. This was made for me. Also, shout out to the Japanese name for Miauskarada being Maskernia. That's a good one. That's Germans very good. is Mascagato. I love that. I love that. Meowscarada is probably the best, though, like, of the options. Meowscarada is one of the top starters of all time, to be honest. Yeah, it's really, really good. Like, it's not... Because, like, a lot of people think that, that the more recent starters have become, like, either over-designed or they look like a person in a suit and like Miascarada kind of looks like a person in a suit but it's still very animalistic like it, it's it's still very much a furry design and it's not over complicated at all it is streamlined it is sleek it has exactly the right amount of colors I think it's, the it's the things that kids think are cool battle monsters has also just changed within the past 20 years that's possible yeah <laughs> yeah like like I mean, kids still like Charizard. Like I mean, it's yes. it's hard for people to not like Charizard. But Charizard is also the everywhere. most humanoid of the the three. I don't know. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, kinda. I mean, like Blastoise is also bipedal, but like it, he's he's kind of chonkier than what Charizard has become. Be yeah, but uh, hmm. Now now I'm thinking about it. Is Feraligator the most popular of the Gen 2 starters, I feel like? Because it's arguably also kind of kind of humanoid. Although, like, it doesn't actually, like, always, like, stand on two legs. It's always pictured on two legs. But we covered this in our Gen 2 episode. It actually, most of the time, walks like an alligator, from, from what I understand. Well, Typhlosion also walks like a ferret, so... Yeah. Typhlosion is great. Um... <laughs> Gen uh, three had Blaziken, I... which is the first true furry. Yeah, and uh, and and the most popular of them. Although uh, I feel like uh, Sceptile is also pretty popular. <laughs> like all three of the Gen Gen three starters are fairly popular, in my opinion. Then Gen four and Infernape. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, I think that's the most popular but... Gen four starter. Might be uh, Torterra. I don't know. Infernape had the uh, the anime to back it up. I know it's my favorite. True. Um, <laughs> it's hard for something not to be humanoid when it's just a monkey, <laughs> and it's based on like you know, and it's based on Sun Wukong, who is you know often portrayed as very humanoid. <laughs> so it's like you know, there, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting stuff that you could that you could do with like dissecting all of the the ways that Pokemon has evolved. Haha, ha, in terms of design, 
but I feel like Miascarada, while it would, like, it definitely wouldn't fit in with, like, the earlier gens, but it works extre- Okay, Miascarada would make an excellent Digimon. Like, like, <laughs> I, 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 like, it would fit right in. Uh, like the like masquerade mon is I don't even think that's taken. <laughs> like that would that would fit perfectly. Like it it, it... it's got kind of a Myotis mon vibe. It does like yeah it, it's got like the the same kind of like dark trickstery performer thing. It's got like jester symbolism, which is like commedia dell'arte thing. So that's kind of like more Italian than than Spanish, but like you know there's some overlap there. I I love it so much, but we got to move on. I, well, I, I think I'm out do, of. Before we do, can we can we talk about how uh, its final um, its final move that it learns uh, when uh, it has um, twenty nine more base attack than special attack, which, and special attack is only eighty one, um, and the final move it learns is Leaf Storm for some reason. Well, yeah, I mean, a it, lot it of doesn't. Star- uh, it, it doesn't learn a physical attacking grass move after flower trick, which is on Evo. After that, it gets energy ball and leaf storm. Well, yeah, I mean, like a lot of starters are kind of like that where they like play into it, but with leaf storm actually shows up on a couple of different, like you, you can have leaf storm or Draco meteor for that. And for that matter, on a Pokemon that is usually fairly uh, physical because you, you, you use it once. You don't care about your special like a... attack stat getting exploded. True. Yeah, you just you just use it really once for, like, uh, if a Pokemon is much more physically defensive than specially defensive, then you can throw out a Leaf Storm, and you're like, oh, ha-ha, I've, I've, I fooled you, and then that's out of the way, and you can you use your better stat for everything trap. else. Exactly. Energy Ball is a little bit different, but I feel like that's that. Honestly, that might just be for the aesthetic, for like, uh, for like uh, performance stuff. I feel I feel like uh, Leaf Storm and Energy Ball both work for the the magician aesthetic in a in a in a way that makes sense. I've watched a lot of the anime, so I've watched a lot of like the coordinator stuff, and I could totally <laughs> see Meow Scarada doing that in a contest. I it's, I, I want to bring back contests just so that we can see them in the anime. Because yeah. like this, the 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 thing that they did in Gen Six instead was fine. It was cute and everything, but like they also kind of made up the rules as they went along because they didn't have a structure. And I just I just loved contests so much. It was so good. Uh. Yeah, all right, that would be a good thing to bring, back. bring back secret bases, damn it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, secret bases are fine. I I like them, but. Uh, Eh, I, I'm not like as attached to them as I am like some other stuff. Uh, so Foy Coco time, our little ghost pepper boy. Um, I love his fire hair. I love his little buck teeth. He's so happy. He is so pleasant. I adore him. I love crocodiles as well. They're they're always great. I'm not totally sure why they went with crocodile for for this idea, but he, like his jovial nature does kind of like fit the 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 whole like performer type vibe in a way that works really well. I I like Fue Coco, uh, but I hate that his eyes extend into his nose color wise. There's no boundary. Um and it makes him look very strange. <laughs> very different from the others. In a way that well, I, I feel like... don't really like well, I feel like the eyes are just supposed to be the black parts. I also I don't think, think that, that... Uh, these Pokemon look better in 3D than they do in a lot of their 2D illustrations. I could say that for, for Foy Coco, for sure. Like, uh, in uh, he looks very good in motion uh, in the anime as well. I haven't watched a ton of Horizons, but he looks very fun in the anime. It's, he's got, like, that absent look on his face. It's very cute. Yeah. Like, I, f- I feel like they, they designed his eyes that way to make him seem a little bit, like, he's just a little bit stupid, you know? Like, oh, he's, he's a, little a lot bit... of bit stupid. Let's be real. Yeah. 
like like he's not all there he's kind of absent-minded but that works because there's can there's a connection there to like he's seeing through you a little bit because he turns into a ghost it's like oh there's like some there's like some levels there it's actually quite fun I I I really like Fue Coco a lot. I think that that the way that they that they wind up leading into his other forms is really cool. Um, Crocolore, a lot of people did not like when when they first got to it because he does. Crocolore is uh, isn't that the uh, middle stage of uh, Totodile? I think you're thinking of something else. No, no. that's Crocanaw. That's Crocanaw. Crocolore. Right. Uh, before we move on to Crocolore, I would like to point out the the little cheese slice on Boy Coco's chest, which is very cute, but foreshadows something I'll talk about in a minute. I mean, I guess so. Yeah, there's there's a lot of like there's a lot of yellow like blocks that they add on as well with. With Crocolore. Crocolore looks like it's wearing suspenders. It looks kind of like a clown, but it's clearly supposed to be a mariachi guy. The thing and I his am... sombrero, like his sombrero is a nest with an egg in it, which I did not register at first. Yeah. But when I found that out, I was like, oh my god, that's adorable. The thing that that's I amazing. find really charming about Crocolore's name is that calor means warm. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So it's Croco and calor. It's very charming to me. That I is love fun. him, yeah. His his Crocolore's official art is a little goofy, but like his uh, his little singing uh, art makes him look very very cute and charming. If you scroll down here, I'll share it with you guys. I think Crocolore is not as cute as Fue Coco. Oh, that is some cute art. I think Crocolore is not as cute as Fue Coco. It's got that very awkward middle stage, but it differentiates itself from other middle stages in that it kind of looks like it could be its own Pokemon. Um, yeah. And, like, I've never been a huge fan of Ludicolo. <laughs> um, uh, I, I like Ludicolo a lot, but I've, I've grown an appreciation for it over time. Um, but, yeah. Uh, the design gets a little more complicated than Fue Coco. Yeah, I mean, like, it it's very clearly going for a specific vibe, and, like, it kind of accidentally goes into clown, but, like, the the reason that it's doing that is to invoke skull imagery a little bit, and, it just, and like, the color choices make it seem kind of clown-esque. And it's, then we get the skeleton. It's going for uh, uh, Day of the Dead. Yeah, so hence the skull imagery. And then we get the Skeledurge, and I fucking love this thing. Uh, this is okay. the one of... This is one of the coolest fucking Pokemon. I think Skeledurge looks their best when they're standing up. I don't really agree. Like, I think it looks good standing up. I think it looks good on on the ground. I just love this thing. I just think it's like to be fair, right? I love crocodiles. I think that the the, the crocodilian family is one of my favorite uh, my favorite um, animal families. I love how they look. I love their. I love. Oh God, my my headphones fell off a little bit. Um, I love <laughs> that they take care of their babies. They're really fascinating critters, and I think that they. I think that most like fantasy animals based on them look really cool. And I think that Skeletor, especially like in its official art and everything, it just looks very cool. It looks you know mildly menacing. It's got like the 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 skull face paint. It looks like a ghost type. It looks like a pepper. It's got like the fire coming out of its out of its face, but it's got its little bird friend. Because it's still got a, because, you know, it's got a friend because crocodiles are actually really good at, like, making friends with other critters. They actually have, like, mutualistic relationships with several species of birds. Like, different, different, uh, crocodilian species will, will partner up with birds to, like, watch each other's nests because the birds will be able to, like, act as sentries and then the crocodiles will, uh, will scare off any, any potential predators if, like, you know, when alerted. And so, you know, they're, they're, like, shockingly intelligent. They're really interesting critters. And I think that this guy looks so cool. And, like, the 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 face paint looks really good. I think, like, you know, maybe there's, like, one too many colors. But I think that the colors all, like, work really well. Like, the purple is also inside the mouth, so it works there. And then, like, the the yellow and, uh, and, and orange work because of the flame colors. And I think that, like, the white patterning to look a little bit like a skeleton, but not too much to be like like overly edgy is so good i love this thing see I agree. all right now laura is allowed to be wrong i agree <laughs> that skeleturge is cool it has a ton of individual elements that are cool 
Uh, the bird is fun. I really like it. The flames coming out of its mouth are really cool, even if they look like clown hair. The fact that it's uh, an all fours crocodilian that's shaped like a crocodile is really cool. The serrated jaw is really cool. Um, but it's just too busy. There's too much going on. There's too many uh, isolated shapes scattered across this thing. Too many lines, too many uh, divisions between the colored bits. There's just too much going on. The design is too busy. If they just simplified it a bit but kept the spirit of what they were I'm... going for, it would have been so much better. I just don't agree. I just, I just don't, I just don't see it. I just don't see how that you, how you could simplify this at all without taking away like the vibes. And I think that the vibes are so good that I don't, I don't think that it's overcomplicated at all. Like I just really like it. I just, I don't know how what I would change at all. I think that it's one of the coolest Pokemon designs that we ever got. Like I love Meowscarada, but honestly, after seeing Skeledurge, I wanted to pick <laughs> Fue Coco. Like I love. <laughs> Like, I love the, the Sprigatito line all the way through, but Skeledurge is so cool. Like, I and I am sort of having that opinion because of how wrong you are about it. But I, I did. Like, the, the minute that I saw it, I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. I, I just love it. I will say that I'm glad I picked it because Torch Song is one of my favorite attacks in the franchise. Oh, yeah, let's talk about Skeledurge, arguably the strongest of the starters. Like, Protean on Meowskarata makes it good in more situations, but Skeledurge is an annoying motherfucker. So here's the thing about Skeledurge and Unaware. It's a tanky motherfucker. If you look at its stats, its HP is the second highest stat that it has, and its special attack is its highest. Um, but then, like, its defense and special defense are pretty okay as well. So, like... It can take a, it can take an attack or two, and then oh maybe it puts you to sleep with yawn. Oh maybe it like sets up with the uh, like can can it calm mind? I'm trying to remember if it if it can calm mind, but it can rest on you. It can set up some. I'm sure it can set something up. I don't know for sure, but it doesn't need to because it can willow wisp you. It can put you to sleep, and then it just sits there setting up on you, and you can't set up back on it because it's unaware, and so, so you, it, it doesn't care about your defense boosts. It doesn't care about your attack boosts. It's just there, and it's taking your hits, and it's hitting you, and it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and it's 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 terrifying. I was in a random bat round yesterday where I had an unaware Clefable that did basically the exact same thing and I was reminded of how how terrifying this thing is it's like ugh, unaware is one of the crazier abilities in in the game you can you can basically solo Gita with a Skeledurge yeah almost on level solo her it's so good yeah, I mean, like, to be fair, Gita is not the most challenging champion. <laughs> well, yeah, I was also kind of crapping on Gita with that, but... Um... I like Gita as a character. I agree that her fight could be better, but, like, I think that she's a, a, a pretty solid character. I think her fight in, um... They put in... the fight in backwards. Yeah, yeah, they did kind of put the fight in backwards. <laughs> they fixed that in um, the Blueberry Academy DLC... I'm happy for that. That's um, where uh, she puts King Gambit flying Terra, I think. Um, oh, that's fun. As her sixth Pokemon. Um, and she leads Glimora. So they clearly were like, oh, okay, we, we, we understand. Like, so it's possible that they did the, they did the, the weird order on purpose to like, because, you know, they're, because she's not actually the final boss uh um Nimona is so it's kind of like so like I've heard some some arguments that that uh she's kind of disappointing on purpose well bad on purpose is still bad yeah but uh I don't feel I don't think it's a bad give fight them credit for that like you know I don't know if it's a bad fight necessarily but like it's not as good as it could be it's true um but yeah, she, I, I think I think the thing that really hurts her is that she talks mad shit leading into the fight. Like she hypes herself up so hard and then she's a pushover. I think <laughs> I think that hurts her um, as much as if not more than her team comp does. That's fair. Yeah. 
Um, God, every time I look at Skeledirge, I'm just like, yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. I just, I just love, because like, because like, look, okay, I've played so many Pokemon fan games and so many of them are edgy as shit, right? I've seen so many different like skeleton themed Pokemon that are trying to go for like this, this death theme. And here is this official design that you have, that goes Day of the Dead and pulls it off so well that I'm just like, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so interesting that they that that like Pokemon had the Pokemon company decided to like throw their hat into the ring mm. and they just fucking blew everything out of the water. It's so good. Uh, I'm sorry that you don't like it. I, I just I just <laughs> love it so much. Like the weird thing is that I do like it. I just I think it could be so much better if it were simpler. I love its little like eyebrows. Like in its official art, it almost looks like it's like skeptically raising one eyebrow, and I just think that that's kind of fun and charactery. And like, I, God, the, the eyes are so good. I I love it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I just I just love it so much. I just received a message from somebody else that reminded me of something uh, kind of weird, but I'm going to talk to you guys about it after the uh, after the episode. So Quaxley was the guy I was initially kind of the kind of the the weakest on. I, like I don't really know because like you know Fui Coco kind of looks a little goofy and Sprigatito is so goddamn cute, but that, like but like Quaxley is just Donald Duck, and I don't know how I feel about that. And I didn't know how to feel about that at first. Um, but you know he grew on me. I think that he, that 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 he is very cute. Um, his little pompadour is excellent. Uh, his he's very he's very like funky, and I like I like a well groomed man. You know he's doing his best. I think Quaxley is very Disney. He is, yeah, absolutely. He, he he's just Donald Duck. Like he really is, and it's <laughs> it's it's crazy how 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 well he fits into that style. Like. And I like that for him. He's also not, like, he's also, like, the blue feet is actually very cool because he's based on, like, a specific, um, a specific kind of waterfowl that's not just a duck. Yeah, the blue-footed kinda... booby. Which I, if I recall correctly, are native to Maine. Uh, yeah, but there's also a, uh, a different, like, like a specific kind of duck that uh that this guy is based off of called the white crested duck who has a little floof on his head it's like a it's a breed of domestic duck oh, which is very enough. fun um and uh so so like i see so yeah, there, there's like both of them and there's also like a uh a teal is a kind of duck apparently according to bulbapedia so that's very funny as well and then like it evolves over the course of it into into like various kinds of water birds and I, 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 I like water birds a lot, so that's that's fun. Um, the thing about Quaxley is that the only water starter that I've actually wanted to use in a serious way in the entire franchise was Totodile. The water huh. starters consistently come in third for me. And that's Quaxley, interesting. Um, Quaxley comes in third for me. Like, Fuecoco's cute, and it's a fire starter, which automatically gives it points for me. Sprigatito is the platonic ideal of Kitty Cat, uh, and Miascarada is great. And so Quaxley is just the odd duck out. Um, ha ha. Pun intended. Ha ha. Um, and... <sighs> I wish I, I feel liked like... it more, but it, there's nothing wrong with it. Hold on, Teddy, did you give your opinion on Skeledurge at all? I did. I like it. It's a funny mariachi guy. Okay. I, I was because I know that Laura and I talked oh, it's a fine. lot. I, like, I don't mind being the relatively quiet guy that pipes up sometimes on these podcasts. Okay. Cultivating my admit. listening skills. <laughs> <laughs> you just have two and a half hosts, it's fine. <laughs> but we love you, Teddy. I, You're no, great, man. No, no, it wasn't as in I thought you were talking over me. I just thought, yeah, I, I talk less here. That's fine. It's just the way it goes. No, no, but we it, like to hear what you have to good. say. You're yeah, a funny guy. I like Skeledurge. Like I said, I feel like it looks better when it's standing up. I feel like the stand-up is kind of the reveal of, oh, that's what the design is. 
I think the oh, yeah, back that, scales kind of might be intending to evoke like a skeleton spine, but it kind of mm -hmm. it is a little bit messy and a little bit complicated. I'm not sure how they could have compromised it though. Uh, and when it comes to Quaxley, that's uh, a little guy, funny little guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, Quaxley and, and, and Score Bunny also feel like they could be friends, uh, just because, like, they're, they're both, like, mostly white guys with color accents that dictate their type. <laughs> and, For a moment, uh, I thought you were saying white guys like white people, and then you said with color <laughs> accents, I thought you meant, like, they put on an accent. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, oh my I, I like god. Quaxley's little, uh, you know pompadour i feel like it establishes that he's like stylish and has a coif and he's just like yeah he's he's doing he's there he's doing his best yeah sorry it's all good no, he's doing it. yeah he's doing his best to be to be stylish and i appreciate that um i i don't know how i would rank him versus Fue coco they're both very good obviously sprigatito is my favorite because kitty um this is true quackswell is a little bit unfor. If he was less grumpy, I feel like he would look a little bit less goofy. But like you know, he, he doesn't look too bad. When I, you, I when think you... the problem with Quaxwell is he doesn't look like a starter. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Like Quaxwell could be the final stage of a completely different Pokemon. Yeah, I think that's fair. Like, his, like I feel like the parts don't really go together. Like, he looks very serious, but then he has this, like, goofy hair. Well, he's the practicing like, hair is a... Pokemon. He's very focused. He's trying to hone his craft. And I appreciate that. Like, it does, he does look very serious about learning his dance, and I, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, and it pays off, as we'll get to, but... Um... I don't know. It's just like the he looks grumpy, like you know, in his Pokedex, uh, in his like little Pokedex thing, he looks much more, um, much more excited about learning, <laughs> and I appreciate that. Here, let me let me uh, da, 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 copy image, da, 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 paste image. Like in this, he looks very, you know, he looks very dedicated and excited, and he looks pretty nice. Uh, yeah, although the, 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 the Pokedex preview pictures. <laughs> In the Scarlet and Violet Pokedex, they're so good. I hope they're they, so nice. I hope they yeah. keep doing that for the rest of the series. Yeah, I, I feel like they were inspired by New Snap doing well. I like. I, I feel like that has to be the case. Did New like, Snap do well financially? I hope it did because I, I want Snap three. Like I think it did okay. At least I'll have to look into it, but. Uh... Yeah, I Quackable is perfectly uh, uh, Quax Quackable is the next one. Quaxwell, <laughs> I think it works fine as an in between between Quaxley and and Quackwable or Quackwable or however you pronounce that. Um, <laughs> I just looked at its I, I I just looked at its Japanese name. It's Werukamo. Yeah, uh, there's a That's... there's one of the mini Hatsune Miku Pokemon collab songs has a whole like poke rap-esque section where she makes a whole bunch of quick in succession puns to make statements and one of them is hey gan which is like the name of um corfish warukamoto pokemon oh. world it's very charming that's very <laughs> funny that's excellent that's fun oh that's why corfish is constantly going hey 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 ah <laughs> oh, i get it now i understand i think i did know that that was a joke on the japanese name but i didn't know the actual i didn't know the full context hold on i got i got a sneeze coming <laughs> bless you okay I had, usually i sneeze twice but i only did once that time i might um, another one might show up later um Anyway, I fucking love Quaffable. It, it, it's phenomenal. I, I think that it's one of it's a it's an excellent design. It's fruity as hell. It's a little tap dancing flamenco guy. He's like he, like the fact that they have his ass just sticking out like that is wild. They really did that. <laughs> I think Quaffable is just a guy Pokemon syndrome, but in a good way. Like, yeah, absolutely. this is a really good design. I love it. Yeah, he's he's just a little tap dancing guy. He's like he's got some peak. He's got like he's got some peacock in him. He's got some water birds of various kinds. He's he's a little tap dancer. He's also like a flamenco dancer. I love I love all the different 
the 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 all the different like vibes flee hit like flow into each other absolutely perfectly. Oh my god! I did not realize that it was Carnival that they were based. Wanima. I wasn't sure what the name. That's so cute. That's yeah. I think uh, well, first off, I really like the peacock tail going up when he does things in battle. Oh yeah, that's really cool. I really like that. But I think the most striking aspect of uh, Quackerval's design is his eyebrows, really. Oh, yeah. Like, the, oh, the yeah. contrast between his really fun-shaped eyebrows and the hair immediately behind it and the little tuft feather uh, above it all, uh, that's that's really good color design. Apparently, uh, the 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 general va like the parts of it that are not based on uh, on a peacock, like the uh, the color accentuation and the the feet and stuff, are based on a an animal called a red knobbed coot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's funny. Um, oh, it's carnival! Of course, it's carnival. God, I'm such a dumbass. Oh, it's it's a uh, quackwaval. I I love that. That's great, and it's a fighting type. Water fighting is a really fun type. For I sure. I wouldn't have expected fighting, uh, but like fighting and dance being sort of like, uh, you know, mixed together is very cool. And it's got Moxie as its ability, and it's and its move like boosts its speed. So it's like oh, it's 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 another example of the of the uh, the starters being like really really solid. Like it's not as good. Like it's not as popular as the other two, but it's still like it sees some play sometimes. It's and... it says a lot about how good the other starters are that the eighty power flame charge is the worst of the signature moves. <laughs> yeah, like that's wild. It's also like there are a lot of good physical water moves, so like you might you maybe would not use the the the, the eighty power the, flame the... charge. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, it's still 80 power. That's, like, yeah. that's waterfall strength. Like, it's only a little bit less powerful than liquidation. So, like, y you probably use it, especially because, like, uh, Quaquaval is not as fast as he as, as you would expect. He's only got 85 speed. But, uh, you know, with, with a boost or two, he, he gets crazy. There are a lot of really good physical water types, though, so he kind of, like... So he, he kind of, he might struggle to find a niche. But, like, the fighting type aspect is also pretty solid. It's got 120 base attack. That's not, that, that's, that is not bad. I think as long as Urshifu is in any format with Quaquaval, you're not going to use Quaquaval. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a shame. That's honestly, I have, I have complaints about official formats allowing legendaries. Because they... With a few exceptions, like Fluttermane and Incineroar and Amogus, uh, it leads to um, it leads to competitive teams being saturated with legendaries all over the place, and that feels a little boring to me. Like let Quaquaval shine in place of Urshifu. Um, it kind of let... depends, right? Because like, as someone who has done a lot of competitive, they do limit the amount of like really powerful legendaries with you know specific stat total like the box legendaries um it's kind of interesting that like how they choose which starters or which which legendaries are like you know the ones that they have to put a limit on it's all it's usually just the box legendaries because of their their stat totals but like clearly the urshifus are like very strong just because of their ability and you know their their moves and stuff it's like Oh yeah, we'll we'll make a Pokemon that ignores protect. You know, one of the most important moves in the game, and that 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 won't cause any balancing problems whatsoever. Aren't you glad that Roy says no legendaries in Draft League? <laughs> I mean, like I like a lot of legendaries, like you're supposed to. I I like a lot of legendaries, um, and I like a lot of the Paradox Pokemon. Fair enough. But... If Roy Lee did allow legendaries, everyone would have like one per team anyway. So yeah, and I mean, like you know, like. If I had like one, uh, one limited like you know limited legendary, and then one like lesser legendary, and then one ultra beast or uh, like either ultra beast or uh, paradox Pokemon, I feel like that you know that 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 would be fine in like a, a draft of ten or eleven. Oh yeah, well, you you you'd like a lot of other draft leagues that just go all all in on legendary. <laughs> I know that the, yeah. a lot of them have like uh, like points assigned yeah. to each of them, which is 
you know, like I feel that like makes sense. I feel like our tier system works pretty well, though. Yeah. But um, I, you know, like How I many... feel like Quackaval is nice because it's like it has the ability to get faster. But the thing is, in double specifically, like Quackaval is better in singles because there's more guys to 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 beat up to get the moxie boost. <laughs> um, but in in our in normal competitive, it's doubles. And there's only four guys, so you can only get a couple of boosts. It's, it's one of the reasons why uh, you don't see, um, you don't actually see last respects, or uh, or you don't even really see, you don't see King Gambit much either. Uh, usually, you put Defiant on him instead of the of uh, his his really cool ability because there's there's just fewer guys to to power it. So. Uh, um, so that's one of the reasons why Quackaval uh, would would be less good competitively than Urshifu would, even like disregarding the absolutely busted ability that Urshifu has. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I interrupted somebody. What were they going to say? No, it was. Just I was. I was about to, to. Oh, go ahead. I was about to ask how many uh, Paradox Mons even see play. Like, there's Fluttermane, obviously. Um, I think I've seen Roaring Moon in some of the few competitive matches I've seen. Um, Iron Hands is good. I know that Iron Hands is good. Um, it doesn't see play all the time, but it is it is very solid. Like, Electric and Fighting are really good coverage. And it's got Drain Punch and Belly Drum, so it's like, it's pretty solid. I know, but like, it might, it might, that might just be that I think that it's good. But like, uh, you see Iron Valiant sometimes, um... All of them have their uses, but Fluttermane is very good, so it's it's a little bit hard to to, to really rank. Hold on, let me actually like. Fluttermane look is up. banned to Uber's good, right? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I don't I don't super pay attention to those tiers, but um, uh, yeah. So let me look at this. Um, I am I am Screamtail, a little. Screamtail saw some play early on. Because it's very fast and it's got like a lot of different uh, support options, but there are other ones now that that are better. Um, I'm pretty sure the uh, the the dinosaur uh, legendary beasts see play sometimes, um, mostly on sun teams. Um, Iron Bundle is really good, surprisingly. Um, Iron Bundle, especially oh, yeah, early the on. Oh yeah, Bird. Yeah, Iron yeah, Bundle saw tons of play. It's so fast. Yeah, it's 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 entirely because it's like extremely fast. I think Iron Thorn sees play on some teams, but I don't know for sure. The Tyrannosaur um, one? Yeah, I oh. don't know for sure though. Um, why would you run I, that aside from? Uh, uh, why would you run that instead of regular Tyrannosaur, which comes with see, the uh, sand setting ability and like? Did you know that you can run both? Oh shit! Eh, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> so yeah i but like i don't see a ton of sand teams these these days so i don't know for sure um but i mean i don't know maybe i just like iron thorns and i'm biased <laughs> um and then miraidon and Coridon both see play but they're you know box legendary so of course they do yeah um let's see it's usually fluttermane uh but i'm um, kind of happy that that fluttermane is so good because i'm a big mischievous stan yeah and i i'm I, I find it funny that 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 Fluttermane is basically just a mega Mismagius in a lot of ways, but because of the way that they that that, that worked, the stats are so lopsided that it's crazy. I love that for that. That that's <laughs> great. That's phenomenal. I love I love that for it. It's 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 lovely because I also am a big Mismagius uh, mischievous fan. Um, it falls over. If you, it falls over if you poke it once, but you aren't going to get the chance to. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially like if you're if you're working with like uh, Indeedy, which is very popular. That sets up a psychic terrain, so you can't priority it. It's like, whoops! I killed your whole team. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it gets a spread fairy move, right? Yeah, uh, dazzling gleam is uh, very good. Honestly. Um, not the uh, the the paradox Pokemon, but the treasures of ruin see tons of play. Oh, they love those. They are they got like they like they got their stats nerfed like before proper release type. Tons of play. <clears throat> Wochi NC is the least of it, but Ting Lu was very good for like 
uh, for a while near the start when there was like less stuff going on. Like uh, just because it's really tanky and like it raises, it lowers uh, the attack stats of everything, so it makes it even tankier. And then Chi Yu and Chen Pao are are both you know extremely potent attacking Pokemon that that are also pretty fast. Like Chi Yu's not as fast as Chen Pao, but like they're you know really solid. Chen Pao's the... just really cool. It's really excellent, yeah. Like there, there are not a ton of cool Baha quadrupedal cats in this game, as we know. But this <laughs> snow leopard is fucking perfect. It's like it's it's between a snow leopard and a and a mink, and I love that. That's great. That's it's so good, and it's got like the 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 fucking sword saber teeth. Is it, there's so much cool shit so cool. with Chen Pao. I love it. Uh, but we'll get to that. We'll get to. We'll have. We'll have like a a, a legend, a sets of minor legendaries like <laughs> arc later on. I think that might that will make sense. Like we'll start with the legendary birds and then go to the beasts and like move on from there. And I think that'll be cool. So we've um, only been talking for fifty minutes. You guys want to talk about Gen Nine story? Let's talk about the best story a Pokemon game has had in ages. I think yes, the absolutely. thing I, the thing that strikes me the most about what's fundamentally satisfying to me about Gen 9's story is it highlights time and time again that uh, institutionally adults are failing children constantly. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I love that for, for kids media in general. Like, I've thought fairly recently, like in the past month or so, a lot about how how often kids are not treated like full humans. <laughs> Yeah. Like, you know, they're they're treated as things to protect and to hoard almost by their parents and by other adults. They're treated as, like, extensions of other things. And so, like, in a lot of ways, this story shows how deeply that hurts other people, how, hurt, how deeply that hurts the kids and how much kids can shine when they are allowed to you know, be themselves and be full people. Like, Nimona is, you know, one of the coolest characters ever, and she's, like, allowed to just be because she's, you know, one of the, the she, you know, she's the champion. She's as as strong as they come. Nimona, that's... N- Nimona is my favorite <laughs> concept for uh, a rival in the entire franchise because she already beat the game. She's starting a new save file to play with you because she thinks it'll be fun. She has nothing to prove. She is top of the heap. She is arguably the strongest trainer in Paldea. Um, And the thing of it is, she did it so easily. She didn't have to put in any any effort at all. And that is really fucking with her head. Like, she has never been challenged. And she is desperate to be challenged. And I and think I that's love that for her. so cool. She's like the inverse Gary, and I love it. I love it. She's like, let's take everything about Gary, <clears throat> Jeez Louise, and let's take it and let's turn it upside down and turn it inside out and see what we get. And I think that that's awesome. And I think that she pulls it off phenomenally. And she works so well as a contrast from your other two friends that, like, that when you see all three of them interact, it's like. Oh, this is this is actually a really solid little little gang that that's got like a lot of really interesting dynamics that they that they that they have available. When the text isn't going by at five million miles a minute. Oh god, that's <laughs> uh, I found out that's uh, that's linked to your text speed. Like oh. the, the, <laughs> if you set your text speed to a reasonable amount, the text that goes by while you're exploring Area Zero will just zoom past impossible to read out loud as i discovered on stream um Uh. i can read as fast as text appears on the screen but many people can't Mm -hmm. yeah i've heard i've heard complaints about that as well you know i I guess it's situations like that which make me think maybe there is a case to be made for maybe having some scenes in pokemon be voice acted cut scenes in particular where it's automatically advancing text I think yeah. Uh, I think peers prove that there should be some kind of voice acting oh, in Pokemon. Boy. Yeah, like I think it, I think peers. Like I, 
appears as the point at which there should have been voice acting in Pokemon. Or it's at least possible. some mumble foley, please, in that scene. Yeah. Yeah, something. Yeah, like, like just do the Animal Crossing. Like, everybody would love that in Pokemon. That would be perfectly it. acceptable. That adds a lot of character. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah. if everybody has a different uh, jumble voice. Yeah, they're... they're, they're... I feel like that would definitely work well for Pokemon. Like, just have, or like, just have like a text, you know, like a text noise, like in Undertale. Like, you know, just just have like an any kind of noise. It doesn't have to be full full voice acting. I feel like full voice acting would feel weird. Like, it kind of feels weird in New Snap, and that New Snap, like, new well, snap like has original voice Snap had. New Snap yeah, it has a very have... small amount of voice oh. acting that is easy. It to has miss. like. Yeah, it has uh, it has very select voice acting, and like it has you know little little voice things that 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 come up occasionally, like while you're while you're doing uh, the missions and stuff, um, which it, which follows from the original Snap, which had you know Professor Oak chiming in every so often. Yeah, New Snap's voice acting is basically identical to original Snap's voice acting in usage. Yeah. And I feel like that kind of usage would work okay in Pokemon. It'd be a little bit weird at first, but like. You know, it, it wouldn't be the weird. It wouldn't be like the worst thing. But uh, God, I I was not expecting the parent to be dead when that when <laughs> when they hit us with the when they hit us with the I am a robot. Your your parent is dead. I was like, I'm sorry, death in, in a, a Pokemon, Pokemon game. game? <laughs> That's like we're going there. Like this really feels like a fan game in a lot of ways. Like like the open world like way of doing things, the multiple storylines, and like when you honestly, the fact that they discuss death so openly is one of the reasons why I like Skeletor. Just like, oh wow, it's like it like it's like a trend. Like they're actually doing this. They're actually like going in this direction and not just leaving it in the Pokedex to 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 trauma children like you know they who who weren't expecting it it's like oh we're actually we're traumatizing children actively (laughs) i think uh uh, i think that arvin's entire story is about his dying dog and that is a subject i never expected to be tackled like even um even black and white didn't tackle something that um that I don't want to say deep. What's the right word? That uh, direct and um, yeah, emotional. Um, that somber. Yeah, like, somber is a good word. Yeah, like like black and white did a lot of stuff about about like abuse and and like idealism and obviously obviously and all that stuff. But like, it's very interesting. I didn't think about it until just now. But Arvin has to deal. Arvin has an entire arc about saving his dying dog. And then his parent turns out to be dead. Yeah. I didn't register the connection there somehow until just now. I'm like, oh, oh, that's why. Yep. Oh, that's why he has a he has a literal five stages of grief type arc because we have to find five five HMs. I'm like, oh my god, I didn't register that until just. God, I love Scarlet and Violet. Oh so my good. god, so they're good. called Herba Mist. Oh my god. Oh, did you not know that? Did you not make that oh. connection? Lore made that connection to me. Like, either Tumblr oh. or Lore made that connection to me, like, ages, oh. like, right at the yep. start. I see. HMs. I see. It, it's very fun. It, that's like a, that's like a, one of the, one of those little details that you add to a game, and it's like, ah, I see what you did there. God. It's very all, excellent. All three of the stories are really good. Like, Nimona's mm. is a little weak. You you kind of have to read between the lines of her character to really appreciate it, but when you do, she's incredibly good. And the the final battle with Nimona, which the cutscene where she's moving her mouth and there's text appearing on screen, should have been voice acted. Um, the final battle with Nimona is a great climax to the Pokemon League storyline. Um, yeah, I mean, Arvin's... like I kind of underst- like I kind of understand why they didn't put as much focus into that like they they stuck with the gym leaders are interesting characters and and Nimona is an interesting character and they didn't like put too much focus into that because they know that we've seen this before and so they 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 streamlined it and kept it fairly focused on the arc with Nimona and the gym leaders being interesting themselves and they let the other two stories speak for themselves as well yeah like Arvin's Arvin's is 
probably the best of the three. Um, it's I, I think there's less meat to Arvin's because he he only really shows up when um, when you when you actually go into the cave to interact with the Urba Mystica. Um, and that's that's the entirety of his cutscenes is him feeding uh, Mabostif and, and well, he talking helps you, you fight. about it. Uh, and he helps you fight the guys most of the time. That so. is true. He does yeah. pop up to help the guys. Um, well, yeah, but he mostly just he shows up right as the battle's about to start and goes, "Oh, hey, a fight!" and the fight starts. Um, yeah. Penny's story goes into more detail, and I I think that the Team Star leaders are the strongest characters in the game, aside from Nimona and the AI professor. As someone who loved Team Skull in Gen, in Gen 7, Team Star is like, what if we took that and we made it much more direct? <laughs> and like, because like Team Skull is like people our age or like a little bit younger that, that kind of have lost their way. They're like 20 some. This is like teenagers and kids and kids that have been it, abandoned by the system mm -hmm. i mean like team skull is also that and like to a certain degree right that makes team skull a little bit more relatable because they're like adults that have been abandoned by the system who used to be kids abandoned by the system and that's kind of why their their whole like vibe is a little bit more like a little bit more distressing i guess whereas team team star is very much like a row row fight the power type story <laughs> in a lot of ways and I I do love a Rao Rao fight the power teen uprising type story, and I think that it's handled very well. And I love their their punk cars and their 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 fun outfits and like the fact that one of them is a ninja because he's just a big old nerd, and the fact that that the the that, that the cutesy fairy guy is arguably the meanest. Like it's a classic trope. I and... think I think that Ari, um, oh yeah, is the hardest fight in the game if you go in on level. Mm -hmm. Like, almost unquestionably, she's really strong. And her her team yeah. is built with as much coverage as you can get from a team of fighting types. Fighting is honestly one of the better types for coverage, to be honest, because, like, fighting is such a simple thing that, like, they can... I mean, like, all the different punch moves, right? The, the, so, like, you know... Um, coverage already kind of exists just because of of that but yeah i Aerie is a great character like all of the team star characters are built on like the concept of duality and gap moe like they're you think that they're one thing and they're actually much more complicated than that like um the uh the the hot-headed fire type one is actually like she she very... doesn't know how to interact with people and so she's lashing out Mm -hmm. And she, but she cares a lot about like, about raising Pokemon, and she has her little like, uh, her little troop of of Char Cadets, and like the uh, the super scary wrestling looking fighting type one is actually a cheerleader, like, and she's and and she's like a shy cheerleader. I love that, and like the fairy guy being like super mean and like a rich snob, but also like you know he cares about his friends too, and like the ninja guy actually being like like super pretty but he doesn't like showing his his face because he gets too much attention it's like ah there's so much my good stuff in there my face doesn't reflect the darkness in my heart <laughs> i know he's such a little edge lord i love him i girl. i want to i want to make an assertion here i think that the battle theme for facing the team star leaders is the second best music track in the entire game for communicating what is happening the only one that's better is the Area Zero theme. I think that's probably accurate. Yeah, it's been a while since I since I did any Paltea stuff. Honestly, I should go back and play the game again. Probably, like I I, I have I have like some some extra accounts. I wouldn't be able to use like the internet stuff, but you know, I I'll have to see. Um, but uh, I. God, what was I gonna say? I, oh, Giacomo. Uh, we didn't talk about him. The dark type tech guy. Like he 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 comes across as like this super punk dude, but he's actually their tech guy, and it's like, oh my god, that's so fun. What the hell? Like the 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 variation is so is so interesting, and you can tell that it's sort of like a new 
thing that they're doing and that like they went they went through some changes fairly recently but they're and they're just sort of getting established but like they they have like a really good camaraderie and it works really well yeah I, the game really God. sells that these guys are friends like actual mm -hmm. friends not just an informed quality they they like each other and they want to hang out with each other did you know some people think that penny like gets off scot free and like does not and like 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 deserve to be actually punished i'm like what do you first of all that is actually how a lot of hackers get like a oh, lot yeah, that no, is what happens is, to a lot she of is hackers under Tito's thumb for the next uh, 5 years or more but... But also, she, she's yeah. gone through enough, and I think all the adults kind of recognize that. Yeah, exactly. And, and and so, like, so like first of all, like, a lot of hackers do wind up integrated into cybersecurity. Like, that's kind of how it works. There's like, a, this is not... An... There's a streamer with a really sexy voice who goes by Pirate Software, uh, who used to be a white hat hacker, um... And he, he tells mm -hmm. stories about it on stream, and it, it's really cool. Um, and yeah, like Neat. white hatting is uh, a legitimate and common career move for people with that skill set. I mean, yeah, a lot of people that are enthusiastic about tech and tech intrusion, a lot of them only hack and stuff because they have certain like sticking points or morals or standards. So if a company comes to them and basically says hey we recognize your abilities and we want to make good use of them in a way that's beneficial to everyone a lot of them were like all right well that works yeah and i appreciate that um whenever i hear white hat hacker actually i i think about the uh the netflix carmen san diego tv show because i only watched a couple of episodes of it but like one of the one, she meets like this this kid who who is a white hat hacker or like that's what he claims to be and then at one point she like she takes this this she takes you know her signature red hat and there's a joke like does the hat have to be white <laughs> so, like that's what i think about now, where in every the time world I... did you get that association from ah! <laughs> man though that I the the story structure in Gen Nine is so good. The three stories that all funnel into they all have their own climaxes, their own satisfying endings, and then they all funnel into the finale. And this and everybody gets to show off their abilities, and like like Nimona gets to show off how strong she is, and Penny gets to show off her hacking, and Arvin gets to be the emotional core of the situation, and it's very it's very very good. And then they they drop like a they drop the big bombshell mm -hmm. on you, and then like the fight is so, it's so good. sick. It's the sickest the final fight. fight in the entire franchise. Um, it's so good. It's so cool, and it's full it's of such. Also, fairly challenging. Oh yeah, like, oh, yeah. it's actually hard. Uh, it's full of such good moments, and you you don't know what's coming at you because up until that point, you probably only run into Scream Tail and maybe. Uh, Screamtail and um, Great Tusk and maybe one of the others because uh, for some yeah, reason I they, think don't, you're, you're... they don't really spawn until after you've beaten uh, AI Sada or Turo. Um, yeah, you're forced to fight a couple of uh, of the, the mushroom guys uh, on your way in and I think there's like one other guy that you have to there's like one other guy that you have to fight similarly so you, you do run into a couple of them but you do not run into like even half of the ones she uses you don't so when see she sandy shocks this... you don't see um the the volcarona the... you definitely don't see roaring moon um mm -hmm. so like when she leads off with this this crazy moth regardless of game which is great because like most people know that volcarona is a pretty good pokemon so regardless so she sends out this crazy volcarona and you don't know what type it is you don't know if it's bug or fire or what and it, and you just and and you're forced to be like oh fuck my my oh, favorite moment shit. my favorite streamer what i watched a pl his playthrough of uh of S scarlet and he got to sada's final pokemon 
Uh, and he, he's going, oh man, this fight is sick. What's up next? What could her final Pokemon be? And she sends out Roaring Moon and he goes, oh, that's a Salamence. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that they went specifically with Mega Salamence, it's like, oh my god, they didn't forget Mega Pokemon existed. <laughs> As somebody who loves Mega Pokemon, I'm like, please, I do god. like that the pseudo-legendary Paradox Pokemon are based off the Megas. It's very satisfying. I especially yeah. like... That... Uh, the Gardevoir Gallade one, whose name escapes Yeah, me. the fact that Iron Valiant is, like, a gender non-binary icon is, like, goddamn, all right. We're really, like, it's a Pokemon fusion and, me and Mega Pokemon and the two most popular Pokemon for, you know, the yes. like, all together. And it's, like, they really did that in an official Pokemon game? I still love like, the... it's a fan design. I still love the Pokedex <laughs> entry that says that they were trying to make the perfect, uh psychic type pokemon and it is not <laughs> it's neither <laughs> yeah i love that i do love that that's 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 mm. very fun and it's little like double scythe anime weapon thing is like god damn this is the most this is the most fan design a pokemon has ever been fan designed and so the fact that it's like an actual official design is so crazy it's so wild i'm not super high on uh on the future paradox mountains but iron valiant is the exception iron valiant is rad absolutely i like most of the robot guys i think that iron bundle looks cute i think that iron thorns and iron hands are very effective designs for sure the the iron uh, i think that iron kind of sucks yeah it's a little bit upsetting that they that they did that but like iron treads is very fun i like it's little like monocular eyeball thing i think that that's really cool and i like the 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 uh the robot versions of the, the the swords of justice i like they're they're <laughs> arguably not super complex either but like i love them so much anyway that like seeing basically like zord versions of them is actually really cool <laughs> the game the game really did make me settle on whether i like dinosaurs or robots more and well i have my answer <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, I like robots robots plenty, but I have also always known that I loved dinosaurs I just kind of more. wish that they'd have explored more future sci-fi energy paradox designs. Yeah. Yeah, we can only hope that, like, maybe they'll... Well, I guess they probably won't introduce more, because they've done all the DLC now. Because yeah. the past paradoxes, some are dinosaurs, some are based off of, like... Caveman, caveman stuff. stuff some are just based off of just more brutal looking creatures but then the future ones mm -hmm. are like robot and robot and robot although i will robot say and robot kind... and robot robot and robot and robot true i feel like that's kind of like a jrpg thing in general though it's like oh we need to go to the future let's put our four kid protagonists in robots and make them go fight this eldritch abomination no in earthbound they were sent into the past in robot oh. bodies remember <laughs> okay, fair enough. I, I, I haven't played the play game. game. Oh, I've whoops. only played like the first couple of hours I'm of it, sorry, and I didn't, I, I didn't like it very much. <laughs> like, oh, like it was fine, but the humor was a little weird. Like the humor was a little bit weird for me. And like as I watched, you know, a playthrough of it, I was like, oh, this is where Undertale gets it from. <laughs> I was like, this is why Undertale does not really work for me because it's clearly this sense of humor, and this sense of humor does not really work for me. And then Delta Rune is is much more a, a a sense of humor that appeals more directly to me although it does still have some of that but it like takes it in much more of a direction that like i more get i guess i think delta Rune is also just like in general way funnier <laughs> yeah that's it, it's it's sort of like aiming for that more i feel like but like the thing about earthbound is like it is so 90s it's so like it's such a 90s rpg like there is a part where as part of a joke, you have to stand still in front of something for like an amount of real game time. It's like several real yeah, real I think time it's like minutes. Two or three minutes, yeah. And I mean, like that—that that was that was kind of a thing in 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 Pokemon in like in Ruby Sapphire and Emerald, like like a bunch of weird stuff like that, like weird ass puzzles that 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 are in like old jrpgs are very fun and i like them even if they're kind of silly um but like i feel like waiting in place for three minutes is kind of weird because if i remember correctly waiting in one place was one of the ones in like ruby and sapphire and then they changed it in emerald for the reggies you know like the reggies had their their weird ass challenges 
Now that was cool hidden content. Yeah. Uh, uh, before before we get off of um, the ending of Scarlet and Violet, I want to point out the most fucked up uh, parenthesis positive on parenthesis uh, moment in the entire game uh, when your uh, when Sada slash Turo gets all crystallized and the fight against the Paradise oh, Protection man. Protocol starts, there's a brief instant where it says AI Sada does not want to fight anymore and then the yeah. text box glitches so and it says you are challenged by the Paradise Protection Protocol. And that is so yeah. fucked up in the best way. <laughs> so yeah, God. I wish that we learned what happened to them. Like, like I would have loved that for the DLC. It would have been nice. The DLC I mean, shows but... that there is actual time travel involved. It's not just fantasy. So presumably the Paradise, the, uh, the AI... Uh, professor went to the past slash future in actuality. Huh. I I guess I, I have I still not finished. The, I don't think I. There's like a it's bonus scene content. you can get. Yeah, mm. with, where you you go to the Crystal Lake in Kitakami and um, mm. and you with Terrapagos and you meet uh, the living professor and you give them a copy of the book. Oh, right, because the other one was, like, Arvin's other parent, and they left them. They left the other parent because, like, workaholic tendencies. And you can read the, the, the journal entries as you go down Area Zero, and it's like, Jesus Christ, this poor kid. Yeah. This poor child. Ugh, somebody get this this kid to Bruce Wayne's stat. He needs to be adopted. <laughs> but, yeah, um, the... Uh, the... Indigo Disc DLC confirms that actual time travel is involved. Uh, so all the people talking about how the AI professor was sent into nothingness and uh, didn't actually go to the past slash future where they could be happy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, suck it. Suck it. You're wrong. <laughs> I mean, I well, first of all, how are they going to survive? Like, I mean, they're like a robot, but eventually they'll... I mean, everything dies, though, so, like, that's not really... Like, it would be worse if it was an actual person who had to deal with, like, you know... I mean, that's uh, an actual person. Monsters. Yeah, but, I mean, like... You mean, I like, mean, like, a an flesh organic person, person. yeah. Yeah, because, like, it, a little bit more durable. But, like, also... The, I just don't like what that says about because about about the past and the future of Pokemon. It it doesn't really make sense. Like the past of we already know that regular ass Pokemon existed. Like because because the fossils in the time period and it's like did did the fossils used to look like that or like maybe there was some aspect of like of if I recall weird... there's some theory I think stated halfway by the game that. It's not the literal past that the Pokemon and the Professor come from and go to. It's that it's like a an adjacent timeline that oh, happens yeah, to resemble right. our assumptions about the future and the past. That's right. Something I do like remember that. that, yeah. I would also so. like to point out that Aerodactyl, Kabutops, and Omastar fit in perfectly with the Paradox Mons. <laughs> eh, I don't know if they do. Like they, they fit. Like they, they're not colorful especially. enough. They're not colorful well, I mean, enough. Like Mega Aerodactyl, no, they were like, colorful. Like, does. Uh, like as as prehistoric creatures, they fit in perfectly with the Paradox Mons. Like the, a lot of the fossil Pokemon. Like, um, oh, what does Anorith evolve into? What's the name of that? Armaldo. Armaldo does kind of fit. Yeah, like a lot of the fossil Pokemon fit in aesthetically with the past paradox mods, so I don't really like the see past a paradox there at all. The past paradox Pokemon have this like punk rock vibe on a lot of them that 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 feels very like contemporary in a lot of ways. It like feels very very fake, I guess, like sort of imagined. Like whereas, you know, all the fossil Pokemon look like animals. They look like creatures, whereas the Pax Paradox Pokemon look weird and and not like they, they like and like out of place a little bit um and i so that's the like because of the punk rock a aspect they don't feel quite as like part of the natural order of things just that's just like my own thing um and i mean like there could have been like some alteration due to the dimensional aspect of it so like again i'm not i'm not super pressed about that i can i'm the only person in the world who wants to to like create a complete and understandable mythos of the pokemon world um, <laughs> I doubt you're the only I, I, like, one. Think... 
like I think about this way too much and my own opinions do not like necessarily align with the usual ones like but the Pokemon world is like my ideal fantasy world if I were to be isekai anywhere I want it to be there I want to be there so bad <laughs> uh, I want to go to the Pokemon world so bad like you know it's it's got some of the the modern society failings but it has free health care it is all but a utopia and mm-hmm. that is very attractive and I appreciate, you know, the ways that, you know, people are still people in it, but, like, the, the, the culture is still so much, like, more giving and, and like, able to, you know, able to, 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 to promote positive change. Even, you know, Team Skull and Team Star are still wronged by the system, but, like, the system is capable of changing even just within a couple of generations, and I think that that's really cool. I mean, I think that I think that's the appeal of a fantasy story is being able to affect real change. Yeah. Uh, let's not talk about politics. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's move on. So, hey. uh, okay, well, we've been going for an hour and twenty uh, minutes. Before now, we uh, finish, I do have one more thing I want to discuss. Okay. Oh yeah, what up? All right, you've been in a draft league for you know a full league. You're done with it now, love. Yeah. How do you like it? I loved it. It was very fun. I. Like near the end, my team stopped really like discussing like team team building and stuff. Uh-huh. So it was kind of hard for me to like get proper feedback, and I felt kind of like, eh, but I I felt like I did like improve my skills over time, Hell yeah. and I I felt like I um I I felt I really loved my team by the end. Like I made a bunch of trades pretty early on, but once I got like my team set up, I really loved them. I loved like picking between them and and figuring out like which six to take i i almost always brought um tinkaton and dracovish because they are very centralizing guys in in their own ways but picking between like the the snow mode and the 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 less snowy mode for my team was really fun and i so i think that i really did like pick a solid team of guys and i was really really happy with how they all did even if mega autono did not get to pop off in any real way uh frostmoth did and that frostmoth that was cooked. awesome yeah the thing i really yeah, like I about draft league is that it's like everything has a chance to cook mhm and uh See, so yeah, my my uh, my 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 eleven guys for for the reference of of both lore and uh, the the people listening, um, my final eleven guys were Lapras, Dracovish, Passimian, who surprised me uh, by being like way better than I expected, Tinkaton, who was basically my MVP. I I loved her as she deserves. Uh, Alolan Nine Tails, who was my weather setter and surprising offensive powerhouse. Claude Zyre, who was my my tanky boy, um, Cantonian Arcanine, who is another who is like just one of the most versatile guys um, in the game. I love him. Mega Audino, my beloved. I will try to draft you next league, and you will be you you. I will fit you into the team a little bit better. Frostmoth, my beloved. May Nectric, who was like I didn't always bring, but uh, like always did like some really good pivoting offensive pressure stuff and uh, and Hisuian Decision which I did not make as good of use of as I could have, but still, like, did um, did put in the work that I needed to. Like, I needed somebody who resisted Earthquake and who could do Defog and who could, like, you know, um, uh, resist, like, who could deal with Stealth Rocks and stuff like that. And he did he did his job pretty well, even if I, uh, even if I didn't uh, utilize him as well as I possibly could have. Hell yeah. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, I uh, we had a, like a uh, the Royal League has a little awards ceremony, and I didn't make it onto the podium for anything except for best nickname. I got second place for Sevish Roth, and I'm so glad. <laughs> that was like the one thing. I was like the one thing that I was hopeful for because I knew that that was a really good name. Was really good I was name. like, yes. I was surprised that I got banned. To... No, I mean, you did really well. I, really I didn't watch well all of your games, but like you were really impressive, and I was really mm. impressed by your strategy. I think it's stuff. just because rain is really good. That's all. Rain is very good, but you built your rain team really well, and you planned around it really well, and you like you were always very like conscientious about like keeping uh, your rain guy around mm-hmm. and when to push your advantage and stuff. I think that you did really well, oh, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
Hopefully I can do really well next season. Oh, yeah. I think you still did well this season. Yeah, Just I mean, I didn't do sometimes. awful. Yeah, I, I was, like, at the, the top of the bottom half, right, I think? I, think so. I gotta, like... Like look at the standings. I know your Tinkathon uh, did some work. Oh yeah, absolutely. She was constantly messing people up with thunder waves and stealth rocks <laughs> and bonks and the occasional foul play. It's like yeah, yeah. I was uh, ten out of sixteen is how I played. Yeah, I mean, hey, that worked. That's pretty good. You don't want to see how badly I did my first season. <laughs> <laughs> By which I mean, I don't want you to see how badly I did my first <laughs> season. <laughs> it was not 10 out of 16, if that's any All right, indication. 17th out of 16. Got it. Uh, would not surprise <laughs> me. It's a shame that you didn't uh, that you didn't make it. Uh, you didn't win your, your first final. Oh, that's final. fine. Hey, I'm your, surprised uh, I made it to the playoffs. So. You were 4th out of 16, yeah. man. You made it to top 4. That was awesome. That was you did great. Yeah. Well, with that, I suppose okay, you can sign um, off soon. Yeah, I, uh, this has been uh, the Own Tempo Pokemon podcast. Um, I have been Obsessive Reader Love. I don't really have anything to plug at the moment other than the uh, the whole, like, the general, um, the general uh, draft league thing that we've been doing. Uh, check out Roy League. Uh, I don't know when the next season is going to start, but we might be doing a monotype season, mm -hmm. and that might be cool. Um, so check us out. Uh, I'm not even Lord? sure how they could what? check us out. Anyways, yeah. Lord, um, uh, Lord go ahead I, and plug your stuff. I've been Lore Weaver. Uh, the stuff I'd like to plug is I stream live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash loreweaver15 almost every day at 1 p.m. EST. I'm a variety streamer. Um, I do a lot of different stuff. I do Final Fantasy fourteen every Saturday. Uh, I just finished Stormblood in that, so I'm about halfway after a couple of years of doing it. Uh, and I upload all my streams to YouTube, at Lil Reaver on YouTube. Uh, go check it out. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, it all helps. Every bit of interaction you do with me helps out. Um, and I really appreciate it. I'm sure you'll find something you like. And Teddy, do you have anything you would like to plug? Hmm. I'm not sure what I'd want to plug this week, or this month. I suppose I'll skip out on it this time. All right, fair enough. Uh, so, as I've stated, I have been uh, I have been obsessive reader love. I've been Laura Weaver, and I've been Teddy. All right, Teddy, do the thing. Oh, sure. Have fun. Stay safe. Be brave enough to be kind, and get Pokemon. Get, get Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> See you, everybody. Bye.